What is going on, everybody? Today, we are talking about one of the most underrated crypto projects out there, not only in the RWA space, the real world asset space, but really in crypto in general. And we're going to talk about price predictions, potential returns, the pros and the cons for the project. I want to be as fair as possible and talk about what's realistic moving forward and the upside that we could have in a project like this. So let's start here. The project is called we set they are a real world asset project so if you're not familiar with real world assets if i have to explain it really simply it's basically tokenizing current securities or illiquid securities like real estate t-bills bonds stocks things that struggled to sell in real life even you could you could talk about collectibles from pokemon cards sports cards to wine to liquor to sports cars whatever it is things that are real world assets that you put on chain connected to an NFT contract, which allows them to be traded globally any, anywhere in the world and frees up the ability to sell them very easily. So you don't have to buy one massive house on the beachfront of Costa Rica. You could actually own one one thousandth of the house on Costa Rica. And that's the opportunity that real world assets provides. And there's already a lot of hype around this. Chainlink has kind of been the hub of the the real world asset narrative so far, but there's a ton of emerging projects in this space and WeSet is one of them as well. So with that said, let's get into the details of what makes WeSet so interesting. So their goal is to be the open sea of real world assets. They're trying to be the primary and secondary marketplace for all real world assets, which is a really interesting proposition. Most real world asset projects generally try to be very specific in the niche they're targeting, whether that's stocks or commodities or real estate or collectibles or whatever it is. So for them to be for them trying to be the marketplace for all is an interesting proposition and one that gives it upside like OpenSea to capture the market if they can execute effectively and find product market fit. So there's a bunch of things that really make WeSet pretty bullish when it comes to the opportunities in the bull market, but but I wanna start with really solidifying what their product is, and then we can get into the really bullish narratives for why WeSet has legit upside. So let's just start here. This is basically their main product page here. This is their main marketplace, the primary marketplace. So they partner with real estate companies or with other companies to tokenize their asset and put it on the blockchain and then create an NFT in which you can purchase or a token in which you can purchase a piece of that asset. So for example, they've got some huge properties here. For example, this IT building in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And they did actually post like a tour of the facility. This is the COO, uh, Jeff who is showing around the property. So they are pretty active in showing off that they actually are doing things, which is, you know, good thing to see in the crypto space, obviously. He's got the WeSet shirt on and everything. So that's obviously pretty bullish just in itself. And when you consider the other properties that they already have, I mean, considering the marketplace has only been up for, I, I wanna say, uh, they started developing it in the fall of 2022. So they've been around for about a, just over a year now. One of the most interesting partnerships I thought that they made here was the Bitcoin mining partnership with a, with a Bitcoin mining facility in Guadalajara. So you could actually buy a piece of the Bitcoin mining operation and earn payouts of Bitcoin as if you owned a piece of the mining, which I thought was a pretty cool RWA option, considering we haven't seen much of that in the RWA space so far. And they've got some other pretty cool projects, obviously, and some more coming soon. So again, they're still in development. It's not like it's a mind-blowing amount of options. But then they also have the secondary marketplace here, which allows people to sell. So like, let's say you buy a token here for the IT building. You could then go list it on the secondary marketplace. So right now there's not that much listed here. It just launched literally like two weeks ago. So right now they've only got, looks like two, four, six, seven pieces listed here. And I think you, you can purchase in a variety of different currencies, USDT, WeCoin, uh, USDC, and, and BNB, I think which is pretty cool. So there are a lot of technical details for how this works. And of course, some of the big questions that rose for me first were like the regulatory aspects of something like this. How does this work? How is it legal? How does it work if someone in the United States buys it? How does, someone, how does it work if someone in the UK buys it? And so they've been pretty transparent in their telegram about some of these things, you know, diving into the, the very nitty gritty here. They are 100% regulated and in regulatory compliance. They are a 
completely legal regulated company in El Salvador, and they have uh, their head offices in Mexico. They're an international company, their core team in Mexico right now, but they're founded in El Salvador, which is of course a very crypto positive country and as you can see in the white paper they even talk about this they talk about the benefits of being regulated in el salvador with under the el salvador digital asset in issuance law so essentially it's it's affirming that even though their company does not own the assets that are on their website so for example their company does not own this building they have a partnership with the managers or the owners of this current building who wanted to sell their property as a tokenized asset so obviously you have to have a lot of different regulatory compliances in place for where that person is to ensure that if they were to rug you or rug the project that there is of course criminal action you can take against them. So you wanna of course all be aligned in that and obviously that that's the case. The quote from Jeff, their COO on this is, yes, there is a long list of regulation and compliance issues that asset owners must complete in order to get regulatory approval. It's like a stock IPO, basically is what he said when talking about the different types of projects. So each project has their own basically contract that they that users are agreeing to. So not they're not all negotiated under the same terms. They have different ROIs or different different types of terms depending on the type of project that they are. So there are different regulatory hoops and that's definitely one of the bigger things for them when it comes to dealing with all of these different acquisitions. So I guess at this point we can just lift off list off some of the bullish things that they've got going for them. So first of all, their con their smart contract is audited and so we have no worries there and if you look on token sniffer, the only issue is that it's not a renounced contract which means that they haven't basically locked it away to be untouched, which is basically what all new companies do. So everything else looking good. And they do have a docs team. As you can see, I showed you their COO earlier, and this is their uh, COO, Nadim Ali Modad. And he's all over the place with different um, content he's made. So he does a bunch of workshops on their YouTube channel. And he's been at a variety of conferences. I even found his, his YouTube channel, his own personal YouTube channel. Um, where he's talking about tokenized assets and he's done a few podcasts as well some in spanish some in english and so he has done yeah something like this as well so he's been all over the place very active and seems to be a pretty good front facing figure for the company and then their coo as well like i said he's he does a lot of stuff as well he even has his own youtube channel it's called tokenization international where he talks about re tokenizing real world assets it's a pretty interesting content and he talks about some of his story and how he got into we set and everything so uh highly recommend that as well he also has a youtube or a twitter and so they're definitely a real company they're real people involved in the project to say the least and their ceo did confirm that they do have vc funding and backing for their actual company they do have funding they you know they're a legit company with a runway here to work on their product and ideate and find product market fit so when it comes to the token itself the project is called we set and the token is called we coin or WeCo. and right now it's at about 0008 Teen. And so it's obviously they have a lot of tokens, 10 billion tokens max supply. And you can see the circulating supply is quite good. It's mostly circulating, only a 1.4 million market cap right now. So it's it's absolutely puny. And that's one of the big X factors here. When we talk about the token itself, the big X factor here is that it has profit share. And so that creates an inherent long-term value for the token and gives it literal intrinsic value which is why i really love profit sharing cryptos because it does add an intrinsic value of capturing profit which is the fundamental value of any stock that exists or any type of security or any asset in the world that exists is because it captures real world value and so i'm a big fan of profit sharing in general and so it shares 10 percent of profits with WeCo holders and they even talk about how it's a dividend reward and how that's legal in El Salvador. And so they're completely legally backed in El Salvador and this is no problem whatsoever. So they've designed a really interesting ecosystem that backs WeCoin and gives it a bunch of different utilities as well when it comes to its use as both a governance token, as a utility token in the marketplace and in the ecosystem, and as a profit sharing mechanism as well. Plus staking, which we'll talk about in a second.
Oh, and while we're here, I also forgot to show this is this is uh, Jeffrey Turnbull's. The, he's the COO, um, and that's his, his LinkedIn as well. So we got everybody, you know, notified here. So right now, WeCoin is only listed on PancakeSwap, and so that is one X factor. They've talked about how they're going to be. They have some big news coming up here. Apparently, they've been teasing multiple times now how in Q1 they're going to be working on getting into a centralized exchange. And they have some big partnerships they have been teasing that they've lined up for Q1 here early on in January. So their goal was to to announce these these partnerships or a partnership after they launched the secondary marketplace, which just launched. So there should be some bullish news coming here in quarter one. They really haven't done any advertising whatsoever. They just started doing some more posting on Twitter and They've been working through that slowly but surely as time's gone on, posting on Twitter and updating people. And they do pretty regular uh, AMAs on their YouTube channel and inside the Telegram. So they're pretty good at, at working with the community and at least keeping people up to date on what's been going on. So their tokenomics are pretty simple. Like I said, most of them are already in circulation. It's really came down to how they launched. Essentially, it was all right here. So you can see the development legal, centralized exchange, reserve. So there's not too much there. They do say 5% to investors, but we don't have names on who those investors are. So most, most of the tokens are already in circulation. So there's not too much to worry about on that side of things either. I've gone through all the bullish news and talked about all those things. So let's talk about price action and some of the negative news. So there's really been only one real negative thing that happened, and that, that was because they had a breach with their staking liquid pool a few months ago. And you can see it really stalled the second pump here. So what happened was basically at the top of the peak here of this first run up in early November, the absolute top, they found the leak. Um, basically, it was like right around November 10th. So almost two months ago now that completely derailed the, the top a uh, basically like 75 ish percent sell off quickly recovered. I was luckily able to I bought in at the bottom or near the bottom, at least some I bought on the way up around maybe 10 and then I bought back here again around four. And so that was kind of my first initiation into WeCo. And I was like, man, I get in and then the pro the project like basically rugs because of the because of the <laughs> staking issue, but the team was pretty transparent about the staking issue. So the most important thing was that no user funds were stolen. It was just a small amount of funds from the liquid pool that were stolen. That's why they were able to just pause staking and then return the tokens to the users and no one's funds were, for, were taken. So that was a good job from the team to ensure that that didn't happen or anything. So they handled that well, considering the circumstances. They have paused staking now as they've been reworking the contract and testing it to ensure that there are no other issues and they're wanting to get it audited to ensure that there's no other issues, which is reasonable. So they've been doing all the right things, at least when it comes to fixing the problem and the price reacted accordingly. I mean, basically within a few days after that, huge bottom it pumped like crazy up upwards of 6x we're still rolling here in a pretty decent value area in my opinion around 1.4 million market cap and if you look at the price here 1.3 million market cap right now as we're, as we're recording this and we're sitting right at resistance here so you can see the kind of structure that we've we've built out here. It's pretty strong levels of support and resistance right in here at this 19-ish level. And so if we see it reclaim and just kind of work in here for the next few days, I would not be surprised if we see a, a breakout to the upside at some point here before the end of January or before mid-January, like January 12th or 13th, which could coincide with the Bitcoin ETF approval if that ends up going through. So I do think there's a pretty good opportunity here for the WeCoin price for sure. The staking was the one big negative. The only other real negative that there was, was essentially right now how they do their marketing and some of their social outreach, because it's pretty bad right now. They really don't have a they don't really have a discord they have a discord but it's dead no one posts in it not even the team and so they only use telegram but their telegram is not organized and super chaotic and their twitter is okay i guess but it's not great by any means and their youtube is fine but not good so when it comes to other projects around 1 million market caps i mean they're way ahead but when it comes to projects that are at 10 or 20 or $30 million market caps, I would say they're pretty far behind on those fronts. So I would really want to see them improve their discord, especially 
get that thing up and running and organize their telegram. They really just need a community manager and they need a social media manager full time. Ideally, just to knock those two out and they'll be killing it if that's the case. I would say their other weaknesses right now, they're not the fastest developers and that is an X factor for sure. Like they could pump out products a little bit faster, but even then they were ahead of schedule on the secondary marketplace. They were over a month ahead of schedule on that. They do live up to their word on the things that they're saying they're going to launch. They do launch them. So then at that point, I mean, it just comes down to, to, to ideally a few more listings besides just on BNB on pancake swap. And if they do that and they continue to build this platform, and continue to add in more assets, especially if they continue to expand to more countries. I really don't see any reason why this project couldn't fly up market cap rankings. And suddenly we're talking about, you know, 10, 20 million market cap, not so far in the future. I mean, when you look at other projects that are in this range, you have look at like something like Relio, their market caps have been flying and they have multiple tokens in their ecosystem. If you just go look at the real world asset category as a whole, obviously not all of these are actually um, real world assets. You know, you look at like prop chain, something like that, where they're at 22 million now. And in my opinion, there's not really any reason why we set couldn't be at around 22 million in market cap. And so there's a handful of others like in that same place, even something like soil, is that a 4.5 million market cap? I mean, we set could easily be there. So there's plenty of opportunity here. And I think they're in a fairly unique niche inside the RWA narrative, where I wouldn't be surprised if we see them over time here, climb their way up these rankings and really start to see like poly trades. Another one, 28 million in market cap. They're a pretty good project. No doubt about it. But again, are they 28 times better than, than we set? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. We don't really know what the upside of real world assets are at this point. If you look at what CoinGecko defines of real world assets, the biggest one is currently at a $353 million market cap. There's a few around hundred million. That would be the first target would be around hundred million, but even that for WeSet would be, a, you know, that'd be hundred X essentially. So that's a pretty good day, day at the office. Who knows what the bull market could bring and what WeSet and the team could develop over time. At the end of the day, if they can start scaling here over the next few months and really start to pump out product and, and really build, I see no reason why we said couldn't level up big time. And hopefully that would translate to the token, finding some new all time highs and hitting price discovery at some point here, because it basically stalled out at a double top before after this massive run early on when they had just launched. So we will see what happens. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And let me know what projects you'd want to see me talk about in the future. I have a few other ones I would definitely like to talk about. They're pretty good, I would say. And hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did. But as always, guys, I'm South Crypto. Follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description. And we'll see you very soon. Peace.